Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning, and we are chatting with a longtime friend, Nicole Donyant Moore. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. Well, we're talking to you because you are representing now, for us today anyway, Tusk BDD. That's the Tuscarawas County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And uh, But uh, we've got just a great story. You've got a great story, a great life story, and um, so we're interested in hearing all of it. But first of all, the reason you contacted us was because you've got a big launch party happening at Tusk BDD. Tell us what's going on. Yes. Actually, this launch party is going to be April 26th from noon to 2, and it's actually going to be at our Charmed Consignment Store, and it's just a small little formal thing. It's a uh, meet and greet me and hear about the program, and maybe uh, uh, we're going to sell some T-shirts for a fundraiser, and so it's a nice little, we're going to have some light refreshments and things, and it's going to be, a, I hope, a nice little turnout. That sounds great. Where is the Charmed Consignment Store located? It's in New Philly. It's um, 117 West High Street. Okay. 117 West High Street. We'll repeat that a couple of times so people... And again, the time that it's going to be taking place on the 26th? Uh, The time is from noon to 2. Okay. Great. And refreshments and learn more about the program there. Tell us a little sneak peek. Um, What will we be learning about the program? What program are we talking about? The FANS Network, and it stands for Friends, Allies, and Neighbors, and it's basically just a network group of people that have uh, come together to help the individuals with developmental disabilities in the community Mm -hmm. and things that that they might need or uh, experiences that they can have if they can't afford it, like the um, we have some initiatives and the one that provides experiences is called make a memory Mm. and people could donate gift cards if uh that individual can't afford that uh particular Mm -hmm. area sure what age group does this serve nicole it serves anybody that we serve Mm. within the community so basically from uh, kid, teen, to adult, anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you're talking about make a memory, um, is this just, uh, do the people, have they expressed some kind of uh, a wish or desire or something they'd like to do? Or just if you get a good idea and think, well, somebody might really yes, enjoy we, that. Yes, we actually had an update on that program where there was the mayor of Yorksville donated some summer water park passes (laughs) to some individuals. Oh, how fun. Very fun. So anyone can participate as far as helping to make a memory for someone who is one of the people served from Tusk BDD, yes? Yes. Awesome. Well, now, how did you get involved? It's very interesting that this is where you've landed for now. How did you get involved with Tusk BDD? Okay. Well, I started... I was basically uh, still looking for a job after uh, after college, and um, I was having a bit of a struggle. Mm-hmm. And then I found in the paper um, this uh, consignment shop called Charmed, and that they wanted to hire some interns to do retail work and, like, counting money and greedy customers mm-hmm. and things like that. And just, you know, ringing up people and having the experience of selling stuff in a store. And that had to be a really fun experience. Yes, it was. I met a lot of people in the community, and I did that for about eight months. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us a little bit. Sell us on the store, because I love consignment. Who does not love shopping around in a consignment store. Tell us what kinds of things we can find. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Tell us what kinds of things we can find there. You can find all kinds of things, all kinds of crafts that people have made. Like, um, for example, we have some homemade cards that some individuals have made in a workshop, handmade. And we have, um, you know, 
t-shirts and um, odds and ends stuff, uh, all kinds of wood things. Mm -hmm. We have a particular consigner that's good with that. And we, I just tell people when they would come into the store that you never know what you find because you never know what's around. I'm going to guess it's different every single day. Yes, it is. That's, we get all kinds. We get all kinds of new stuff. Uh, it's so fun. Now, say someone is a crafter, or and they might be interested in selling things. Is charm something that anyone is able to sell something at, or is this something that um, that is things for sale that um, people who have been served by Tusk BDD are selling as consignment, or does it work both ways? It works both ways, yes. actually. People mm-hmm. with or without disabilities can sell stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then everybody can shop there. Now, if it's somebody that um, just comes off the street and wants to sell stuff, then it's um, the store takes a 10% consignment fee. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if it's an individual that we serve, then that individual gets 100% of the sale oh. of what was sold. Well, that's awesome. That is that is an awesome uh, thing you've got going there. And how long, do you know how long this uh, consignment store has been in operation? The consignment store has been open since January. Wow. Since last January. But we had our open house last March. Awesome. So about a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little over a year, and uh, and doing well, I'm guessing? Yeah, very well. And then is it from through Charmed Store that, that's, that the fans' network grew from this? That you thought, well, you it's, know what else we could do? the headquarters is based out of, yes. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Now, you did an internship with the store, and then that turned into an internship with Fans Network. I'd love to hear about your internship experience. Yes, I did. Um, like I said, I worked at the retail part of the Charm Store for about eight months. And then once that uh, internship ended, uh, the board came to me and said, well, we have this program called Fans Network that we would really like you to try and get off the ground for us because it hasn't been very successful (laughs) as of late. (laughs) And they knew who to turn to. Yeah, they knew I was, uh, they knew I was really good with computers and social media and Mm -hmm. I could get the word out there and advertised. (laughs) You know, ever since, and I don't want to stray too off from what you want to talk about today, but you are such an interesting person. Ever since you were a very little girl, uh, active in Girl Scouts, you would get an idea and you would just make it happen. Nicole, that's, mm-hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about that. You were a Girl Scout. You had to come up with some kind of a project. Do you remember what, what badge you were going for? during? It the- was the Bronze Award Project. <laughs> okay. And what did you do? And I uh, collected, I think it was, gosh, it was so long ago, <laughs> um, over a thousand books. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, my, that was my goal and that was my project. Yeah. It's pretty funny to hear your mom talk about it, too, because where, where would you put all these? You, you went around to do a book drive and ended up with, like, at least a thousand books in your own home, right? Yeah, when I was living at home in our dining room. <laughs> So that's Just pretty cool. Stacks and stacks and piles of books and containers. It was crazy. That's so funny. And did you think through at that point what you wanted to do with those books at that point? Or no, had you, you, no, were just, I had, you just wanted to do a book drive? Yeah, I just wanted to do a book drive. And then I had all these books and it's like, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> so from there, what happened next? Because this is pretty amazing. From there, um, we were uh, heard about this show called Three Wishes, and it was hosted by Amy Grant and Carter Osterhaus. Mm-hmm. And um, basically what the show was is they would go from uh, towns in the United States, and they would grant three wishes. That was the title of the show, and you could wish for 
yourself, for another person, or for something in the community. And your wish was for, get these books out of my dining room. Yes, and my wish is for, <laughs> hey, um, the town of Mineral could use a library. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you had to be so blown away to get contacted by them. Uh, you were how old at the time? Oh, gosh, how old was I? Um, let's see. I, I'm trying to remember well, as well. My, my book recounts, I was 14 years old. <laughs> okay, there is a book about this. Yeah. Very cool. So you're 14, not even driving yet, 14 years nope. old, and uh, suddenly Amy Grant and Carter Oster end up showing, what, knocking on your front door? How did this happen? Well, first of all, it was a, um, it was a, like a casting call. Oh, right. And we, we went to the casting call in the area because they had some casting calls in the Dover, New Philly area, mm-hmm. actually, at the time. And we had just went and, you know, filled out all the paperwork. And I did my spiel of this is what I would like to wish for. And you had to do a pitch. I wasn't expect. I had- wasn't expect. Go ahead. I wasn't expecting a callback. Yeah. So you actually had, now did you pitch this to producers, or was Amy Grant actually there, or who were you telling your idea to? We pitched it to producers at first, Mm -hmm. and then Amy Grant was involved in the process later on. Of choosing who they were going to do, and they chose like three from around the same area, is that right, if I recall? Yep. So you get the, you didn't expect to get a call, but you get that call that you never expected to get. What was that like? It was just awesome. Actually, we weren't even we weren't even home at the time. We were on vacation, <laughs> and my my grandma calls and said, "Yeah, somebody from Make a Wish or a Three Wishes or somebody called and mm. wants a call back." Mm. And you thought grandma was kidding, pulling your leg a yeah, little. Yeah, we're we're thought <laughs> we thought, oh my gosh, uh, you got to be joking. <laughs> So you had, at that tender age, the amazing experience of, first of all, cameras start rolling in and following you around. You, you're one of the first reality TV stars in the area, and cameras are following you around. What's that like, Nicole? That was just surreal, really. You would have to do, I don't know, how many takes of a certain scene of, okay, that was good, but we still need to do that again. Oh, isn't that interesting? Because when we're watching these, it looks like everything really is just spontaneous it's, and is seamless and simple, and it's really not. <laughs> so they would ask you to go back and do something over again, even though it's supposed to be reality. Mm-hmm. So funny. So your wish was an, a library, which um, it, how, tell me, bring me up to date. Is the library still in operation, and where is it located? Because that was an amazing building. With the neatest little children's corner, I remember. Um, yes. T- bring me the up The library to- is still there. Awesome. Um, and it's located in Mineral. Mm-hmm. And where where do they continue to get books? People donate them, or how does that work? Well, that's the way it used to be. Okay. Let's just say that. Okay. Um, okay, things have changed or something. Things have changed. Okay. Things have changed substantially. But how cool must it feel, and I won't put words into your mouth, but every time you drive by that, do you get some kind of a sense of, oh, my gosh, I had I had a lot to do with that being right there? Yeah, I did have a lot to do with that, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. So No, and you absolutely should be. I knew our time was going to be speeding by. We need to take a short break, but we will be back with Nicole Donianmore right after these words. You're listening to Our Community.